Hey, and welcome to Internet Roundup. Oh, we're doing this again. The the wildest Western uh, show on the web. Westernist? West of the Alamo. The wildest Westernist show west of the Alamo. That's Davey, our new tag. Dave Crockett. <laughs> we should get those hats. Yeah. That should be like our Stuff You Should Know thing. Like we're always seen in our like raccoon skin caps. I used to have one of those when I was a kid. I did too. I think we all did. Mm-hmm. Um, this is just getting worse and worse. I wonder if <laughs> we should just start coming out here and just burping and farting and see if people still watch. Okay. And that's the whole show. I don't know if I can bring myself to do that on camera. Welcome to Internet Roundup. <laughs> I don't five think minutes. I could, seriously. No? <laughs> you can't fart on cue? No. Weird. No, but even if I could, I don't know if I could do it on camera. Oh, you mean- I think I'd just be so overwhelmed by shame it would just go- right. Up into my abdomen. Yeah. Said the guy with the macrame cup I like this holder. Thing. It's great. There's a green one too somewhere. All right. So twice a week we, uh, I'm sorry, jeez, once a week. Yeah. I just almost doubled our output. We round up the internet two articles at a time, and we're going to start this week with uh, the ugliest color, um, which is Pantone 448C, opaque oh. couche. Is that how it's pronounced? I don't know. K-C-C-O-U-C-H-E with a little over the E. Couché? Couché, says Casey. We have a live-in French expert yep. in the corner. His nickname's Frenchy. Opaque Couché, Pantone 448C. Uh, and it is, um, well, it's been called the, the ugliest color. In the world. In the world. There's a researcher in Australia who is apparently looking at finding the world's ugliest color Mm -hmm. because he wanted to use it on cigarette packaging, right? Yeah. Or was it just totally unrelated to that? No, they surveyed a 1,000 smokers uh, between 60 and 64 and said, what's the worst color? Um, Because what they want to do is make cigarettes more unappealing by forcing the companies to put this color, the health warnings, like have this color be featured on the package to make people go, I don't want that. If there's an idea out of Australia that isn't interesting, I haven't heard it. <laughs> You're pretty great. Yeah. Um, if you look up the color, which is what you should do right now if you're near a computer. <laughs> it's um, pretty bad. Olive green is one way to say it. Other words used to describe it in the study were filthy, <laughs> dirty, death, <laughs> and tar. It's the color death. Baby poop, I've seen it as. Yeah. It's not a great looking color. No. But it depends on the application. Like, I, I could see it fine if was in a painting maybe, surrounded by other nice looking things. Yeah, used appropriately. Maybe. And Pantone has that same uh, philosophy as you, Chuck. It's Pantone 448C, I think you said, right? Yeah, the Color Institute. Pantone is like, they're like the world's color experts. Mm -hmm. And um, they said that there's no such thing as the world's ugliest color. That's right. So stop being jerks, media. Yeah, don't be mean to our color. Right. Um, But it's pretty cool because... um, they're trying to keep people from smoking, like I said. And if you've been to, if you're American, if you've been to, and a smoker and you've been to other countries, a lot of times you might be surprised to find a cigarette package with like a picture of a disease gums. Yeah. Or lungs or something on the package. Mm-hmm. And it's a, I would think a really effective way to keep people from smoking. It probably depends on the smoker. Like that kind of stuff never got to me. Even really? when I smoked. Yeah. Did not phase me. Well, probably so. Cause if you want to smoke, you want to smoke. Yeah, but I, I'm sure there's people out there that are like, God, that's what my lungs look like? I'm quitting. Maybe, but it's probably more like people who don't smoke are like, how can you look at that picture yeah. and still smoke? They, they stop <laughs> smoking just to just to get people to leave them alone. To rub it in. Uh, if you wonder, though, in America, in the United States, why we don't have that kind of packaging, uh, well, in 2009, there was a law passed ordering the inclusion of these things. Well, where is it? Well, I'll tell you where it is. Um, they're fighting it. The lobbyists? Yeah, it's and the cigarette lobbyists. companies. They're, they have convinced an appeals court to delay implementation. Right. Who knows how long? Maybe forever. In ad infinitum. That's right. Man. But right now we can count on Pantone 448C um, to do the job. Yeah, somebody like goes to pick up cigarettes and just like throws the them into the gutter. So God, ugly. I want the cigarette inside, but I can't get past the pack. 
Uh, if you watch the show a lot or listen to stuff, you should know we talk a lot about booze. Yeah. Um, specifically, well, all kinds of booze. But we've covered like old beer, ancient beers, ancient recipes for things, whiskeys. And now we're going to- The premise that bread yeah. came after beer is uh-huh. a mobile starter for beer. Remember that? Yeah, because of bread, right? Mm-hmm. Or because of beer, we got bread. Right. Not the other way around. Right. Like to soak up all the booze in your stomach? To start um, beer. Yeah. Like a batch of beer. I'm just kind of carried around. poking fun at the notion that if you are if you had too much to drink, like eat some bread, it'll soak up the alcohol. Yeah, that doesn't work. But if you eat grease, like greasy food before you start drinking, uh-huh. it apparently cuts off the ability for alcohol to be absorbed. So really? you'll get less drunk. Interesting. And you will have less of a hangover. All right. Well, that's a tip from your buddy Josh. If you're of age- and don't drink to excess, unless you've had fried chicken. Even then. <laughs> uh, so, long story short, uh, there's a distillery now that has blended two things that we love, beer and alcohol. I'm sorry, <laughs> beer and whiskey. Right. It's all alcohol. Sure. Uh, and it's pretty neat. Um, Tim Obert and Clint Potter have a craft brewery uh, and a whiskey distillery uh, called S- uh, Seven Stills, and they have said, you know what? These things aren't far apart right. at the beginning of the process. So why don't we just see what happens when we mix them together? And not literally mix, just pour them and mix them together. Right. But if we craft them together. Yeah, like if you take an IPA and use it as the starter for a whiskey. Yeah. You will come up with an IPA whiskey. And apparently they have done that. Um a double IPA whiskey. One of the guys said it tastes like an extremely concentrated IPA. Yeah, I'd really like to try this. Yeah. Because I figured it would just be whiskey still, but maybe you could have a note of a beer. Yeah. But he said it actually tastes you, like beer a little bit. I'm kooky for hops. Yeah, me too. I love hops, so I would try it too. Um, they also make beer infused with whiskey by aging the beer in uh, whiskey barrels. Right. Right? Or sure. storing it in there. And I think I've heard of that before. Yeah. But um, I Yeah, like- um, in its gun, they, yeah, they they like store theirs in certain kinds of casks that give it that really distinct flavor. Uh huh. You having fun with your little pet over there? It's uh, <laughs> keeping me calm right now. I'm just barely hanging on. All right, well, we'll wrap it up then before <laughs> Josh commits a crime. Oh, I was teasing. I'm fine. We can go indefinitely. No, no, we're at the end anyway. Um, you can check it out. Seven Stills Craft Brewery and Whiskey Distillery. Yeah, and if you're out there, Obert and Potter. Yeah, send us some. Yeah, that'd be great. Or if you know them, tell them to send send us some. (laughs) Exactly. Got anything else? Got nothing else. Uh, That's Internet Roundup for the week. And we'll see you next week.